So Molly, we talk a lot on stand about taking a stand for faith, for freedom, government by the people. I think freedom really stands a lot in our business world for freedom of our economy and free market system. But we don't just see people taking a stand in the political world, which is often what people talk about, especially with some of the guests that we have. People have to take a stand in all areas of their life. And so I wanted to talk with you about having to take a stand in the face of adversity in Mm -hmm. this world that you're in. Uh, You just kind of referred to it, you know, having to take a stand about not taking an opportunity with an organization that didn't align with you, but could you share with us some of the decisions that you've made, some experiences that you've had having to take a stand in the face of adversity as a business owner? You know, everyone knows that like everything has gotten more expensive. So when I started, butter was $1.99 and now it's $3.49 to $3.99. And so I had to make a decision. Am I going to switch to margarine and, and possibly change the complete integrity of what I've been building this entire time and save the money or not. And I decided not to, and I didn't raise my prices because I wanted people to be able to still enjoy it. So my margins dropped a little bit, but not a humongous amount. And I really think that that is what has helped me to stand and stay, you know, still like competitive with the other people out there. I mean, I'm being compared to with like pricing is like Nabisco and, you know, that sort of thing. So it's, I wasn't prepared for that or a premium gourmet cookie. So, but, um, that alone is good. And then also having a stand in my integrity of who I am, you know, there are things that I don't want to align in that, that I'm invited to that are big opportunities that I just say, oh, no, thank you. You know, and also I'm really bold about my faith. You know, I went to the world food, um, competition a couple of uh, months ago and they invited me there and I brought someone to the Lord right there in the middle of the stadium, you know, and I, and I believe in a, a divine appointments and I know that that's part of my purpose here on this world and I won't compromise that. So that's, that's really one of the things that I do take a stand on. If people ask me about it, I'm bold. I love that about you. You're, you're bold about a lot of things like, you know, Cheeto <laughs> sauce on cookies, bold. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think that I think going into business takes a lot of boldness. Absolutely. Yeah. It's uh that's one of the things that's gonna make you good at business too. That's what I think. So one of the questions I had, and having gone with you through this journey, and you know, having been in conversations with you when you were first getting your legs up under you, kind of those hard stages of the entrepreneurial journey. Yes. It really is, I believe, and Josiah and I have talked about this because he's interested in going into business. It's the business owners, whether they're small business owners or small business owners that become large business owners, our our companies and our corporations that really drive the economic industry of America. But in Mm -hmm. order to have small businesses and large businesses, you have to have people willing to take the risk and get out there and do that. People who are not comfortable just being employees and saying, I'm going to go exchange time for a paycheck and work for someone else. But instead they say, I've got an idea. Like you said, I'm going to hustle for capital. I'm going to take a risk and put it out there and then have some exposure and um, try and create product and add value to the market and the economy and exchange that for something. So you're someone who's out there doing this every day and engaging with other entrepreneurs. So I wanted to ask you, what's your take on why more people aren't engaging in the American dream in this way? Why don't they just go for it? Well, I think that they don't have the faith, first of all, because God's going to give you ideas and inventions if you listen to them. Um, but there are a lot, it's fear based. So a lot of people are like, how do you do this? How do you know you won't fail? I don't know I won't fail. I've failed lots of cookies that I tried to give to people. And they're like, oh, this is horrible. I'm like, it is bad, isn't it? You know, and so, you know, you just have to, you have to be okay with the bounce back and you have to be really prepared to pivot. But they, you know, if, if something, a concept that you've come up with that you absolutely love that you feel like it's a divine thing and there's nothing else out there like it go for it what there's no one stopping you except for you stop limiting yourself to maybe they won't like it maybe they will or whatever you don't need to sell to the whole world there are people that just want indulgent cookies the people that are gluten-free are not my customers you know what i mean i'm just going for the ones like me that want something really delicious and naughty and there's enough of people eight billion people in the world there are gonna people that love what you're coming up with so you have to just cling on to that and know 
And I always talk about the peach thing. And remember this, because it's really important. You could be the juiciest peach, the most sweet peach, the most beautiful peach in the world. And there are still people that just don't like peaches. So don't take it personally if they don't like your stuff. Just be like, they don't like peaches and move on. And just know that. Don't get defensive. Be open and always be kind. Hmm. Those are some wonderful, wonderful observations. I've heard the peach one before. And it's true. Some people just they just don't like just peaches. Don't like peaches. It's, it's unfortunate. But for the people that do like peaches and the people that do like Molly B's cookies, yeah. how do you want your business to impact and change their lives? Their lives. Well, I wanted to bring them joy. I want them to have an experience that just makes them happy. I have scripture on all of my packaging. So, and I just put the little address so they have to look it up because I want people to have to be tangible and see what is this? Why is this this here? You know, and I'm, I love that. But also, I have a bunch of silly dad jokes on the back of all my boba doodles. And it says to do a silly fun dance in order to eat them and you have a better experience. I just want people to have joy. I want them to get them. I want them to learn my story and be inspired to, you know, Mary Kay started her business at 45. Uh, KFC started at 59. I was 45 when I had to start completely over. It's doable. You're never, ever, ever too old. You're not just start right now. See, so that's I'm not too old. You're not. I, no, I don't you know are where not. that's coming from. I, I just want to bring out some family laundry right now. I haven't even started yet. I'm not even at my prime entrepreneurial starting age yet. I'm very confused. I don't know where all of this is coming just, from. That's <laughs> Molly. I, <laughs> so, You're never too old. Absolutely. I'm just so glad that you shared that with my high school son, Molly. That was just a lot of wisdom coming from Good. a moment of experience. Look at him. He's like, he needed, I didn't come he needed to hear that mom hasn't even reached her I prime. <laughs> You're not I even know, close to entrepreneurial I, age yet. I agree. You haven't reached your prime entrepreneurial age. I'm not sure why we're acting as if I've said ever anything said, about my I've age. Never... You're talking trash <laughs> about my age I, ever. I literally have no idea where this is coming from. My <laughs> life is over. She's ended me. Mrs. Molly, what are your dreams for the future? Because I have none. <laughs> so my dreams for the future are I want to exit in two years, 2027. Um, consistent with other people who have exited at the same pace that I'm growing right now. Um, there was a candy company that just recently exited at $360 million. Um, There was another one, pretzel company, that um, exited at $1.1 billion. Um, so that's my plan. I want to exit. Um, all my investors will be very happy. And then I plan on um, making and I started a nonprofit called the Blakely Foundation that is helping kids out of foster care that are just lost because some of them when they get out of foster care, people will just beat them on the streets They're like there you go. Best of luck to you. And it's um, teaching them how to do every single possible part of the restaurant business. So it's called Entry Level mm -hmm. Academy. It's already been approved by the state of Alaska as a second post -educa educational program. And um, we're starting it. So I want to grow that. I want it to be national. And I want to help kids that just need a little help and motivation and know that they're loved and that they can do anything. So that that's where my heart is. That and helping women that are like a single moms like I was all kind of in together with it. Hmm. that's wonderful we have only a couple minutes left in the segment so i've got just one last question for you okay what would be your message to all of america if you could say one thing to our entire nation that's good what would you say remember that we were founded on in god we trust and don't forget that <laughs> 